College football week 12 gambling picks brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got awesome sports books down there, six of them. They got Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Fitz Casino, Hollywood, and First Jackpot. Awesome stuff. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Check them out. They got all the information that you're going to need. Go over to winningcureseverything.com and sign up for the football pick em contest. We got seven college games, three NFL games. You're going to pick 10 games against the spread. The winner this week will get a two night stay at, I believe it's Hollywood Casino. You know what? Go to the website. It's got all the prize information on there. I don't remember exactly what it is this week off the top of my head. And I should have written that crap down. Show enough. Last week, Carol C. from Huntsville, Alabama went 7-3. and three. She tied with seven other people and won the tiebreaker. She got a $100 gift certificate down to the Barn Prime Steakhouse and a $50 slot play over at First Jackpot. So she will be enjoying, uh, enjoying Tunica, Mississippi herself. So like we said, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Right up in the top right-hand corner is a little thing that says Football Picks Contest. Enter that bad boy. Last week... I went two, four, and one. It's kind of tough. I've had many of those two win weeks. It's it pretty, was uh, pretty, pretty sad. It was ugly. Sorry, it was bad. It. You, however, went four, two, and one. I've lost four games in two weeks, and all four of those games are games that we agree on. Yeah, the games that we liked. So the so for the first time, we collaborated. Not really. I have my games. You have your games, and I just wanted to make sure. Any game that we have the same, I'm taking off. You get them. <laughs> because there are 10 games that I like this year, this week, and so I figured I've got room to scratch off. On the season, I am 39, 36, and 2. Chris yeah, you're is, still doing pretty well on the season. It's a, it's a touch over 52%. It's like 52.08%. Yeah. You are 37, 38, and 2, just a hair under 50%, Woo. but you can, you can change that around yeah, in one right. weekend. Change that around in one weekend. If you were watching on YouTube... Give us your seven picks. You don't have to pick the games that we pick. Just the lines that you like. Tell us where you got the line. I want to double check and make sure you're not making up lines because we had some fools doing that last week. Some chicanery. If you go undefeated, and now last week I said if you if you go better than us for three straight weeks, we ain't got that much time left together, okay? You go undefeated, 7-0 and this week. You can pick 10 if you want to. If you don't go undefeated, though, that's on you. 7-0, and give me your best seven games. You go undefeated, we're going to bring you on the show. I have no idea what would this, this is Gary's idea. I have no idea what we're going to do if, like, five of y'all do that. So. We're just going to bring them all on. That's It's all good. We'll just bring them all on. Just one, two, three, four, and it'll be fine. Everything's good. But I'm telling you, I've had people tell, like, fade the picks, We've had all kind of people in my inbox with, oh, I could have done better than y'all. Like, prove it. Show me you can do better than this. Show me you can go 7-0 and in a weekend. Bring it on. Bring it to F on, buddy. Let's roll. Let's do this thing. I got first pick. Go ahead. First pick for me Saturday, 11 a.m. on the Big Ten Network. Northwestern minus three at Minnesota. The metrics have got Northwestern minus 5.4. Northwestern is 15 and 4 against the spread in their last 19 against the Big 10. They are 13 and 2 against the spread in their last 15 on the road against the Big 10. Pat Fitzgerald knows how to beat the Big 10. 3 points is not near enough here. Minnesota is getting love because they housed Purdue last week. I firmly believe that Jeff Brom got a phone call before that ball game saying, hey, we're going to fire Bobby Petrino. How would you feel about coming home to Louisville? And the whole time he's on the sideline at Minnesota, who is not a good football team, by the way, all he's thinking is, man, I want to be back home in the Commonwealth. That's what I want to do. Jeff Brom got smoked out. Now everybody's in love with P.J. Fleck for whatever reason. Minnesota, the Golden Gophers are playing the Big Ten West champions. Give me Northwestern minus three. So that I, ain't near enough. So I love Northwestern. I've bet them a lot. And and I support our boys from the West Lot Pirates. West Lot Pirates, what's up? 
I don't think you listened to their podcast this week. Because their podcast this week talked about how they're probably going to start resting guys because none of the games, the last two games, matter. They want to win them, but anybody who's got any ailments whatsoever is going to sit. And and with that being said, I am staying as far away as possible. I hope they win. I, I hope will they tell cover. you this. I'm, I'm all on you with it. They are looking at it from a different perspective. But if, but if they start preparing for this Big Ten championship game that they've already clinched, then and I can't fault them for that, then, then I, will I, tell you I this. would not be betting on that. Northwestern is in the top 25. They are 6-4. and four. They need one more win in order to get to a bowl game. Because if they lose the Big Ten championship game, if they lose out and they lose the Big Ten championship game, they're 6-7. and seven. Like, you got to be at least 6-6 six and six to get to a bowl game. I don't think that you can go to a bowl game if you're 6-7, and seven, or at least you're dropping the pecking order. Northwestern, get your ass to 8-4. and four. Quit messing around. You can go 9-4 and four and go to a New Year's Day bowl game. Quit playing with me, man. They can, they can win. They can go to the Rose Bowl and lose both these games. J- quit playing with me. Anyway, Northwestern right. minus three. Don't listen I'm to this starting. chicanery. I'm starting. I'm starting. <laughs> Steal my words, man. I'm gonna start out on Thursday night football. All right. Tulane, Houston. That's a Thursday night game. Yeah. I got Tulane ten and a half. I told you a couple weeks ago, Houston looks good. I bet it I bet against them and they house South Florida. Yeah. I bet against them the two weeks after that. They and you made some money. Up. And not only did I say anything, I said they could lose out. It's entirely possible. I, I'm not saying they're going to lose this game, but I sure like Tulane plus 10.5. That hook really looks uh, and uh, I appetizing. Will, and I will have some money on the money line. I can understand with, that. With all dogs, I have money on the money line. Saturday, 11 a.m. on ESPN Extra slash ACC Regional. Pitt minus six at Wake Forest. Now, it looks scary. It obviously looks scary, right? Pitt needs one more win to get to the ACC championship game. One more win to win the ACC Coastal. That's all it takes. One more. Now, the metrics have only got this Pitt minus four, uh, 4.6, but the numbers haven't really liked Pitt all year because they were real bad early in the season. Correct. Pitt, however, is 5-0 and against the spread in the last five games. Wake Forest? They give up 5.19 yards per rush. Guess what number that is? That's number 113 in the country against the run. Pitt, they average 6.49 yards per carry. You know what number that is? Number four. Number four in the country running the football against the number 113 team against the run. Pit all day. And you giving me this bunch at less than a touchdown? Man, look, I understand everybody's in love with Wake Forest because, oh, they beat NC State. NC State sucks. We said that on the, on the show. Oh, yeah. No, no doubt about that. Do not doubt the Pitt Panthers. Pitt rises. Pitt minus six. Let's roll. All right, you talked about earlier Jeff Brom getting a phone call. See, I think he got that phone call, too. And I saw Tom Herman get that phone call a couple of years ago at Houston. And I know how this plane works. Also, I cannot live in a world in which Wisconsin <laughs> is just as bad as they've been. Give me Wisconsin plus five at Purdue. Wisconsin going to win this game straight out. <laughs> they, you, Wisconsin the might one? beat the hell out of them. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how many phone calls he did get. He might have gotten one from Bobby like, Jeff, you can't take this job, Jeff. They just fired me, Jeff. You can't. Come, come on. Come on. What's your next pick? <laughs> Utah State minus 28 at Colorado State. That's Saturday, 1 p.m. on the AT&T Sportsnet slash Rocky Mountain Sports Network. You cannot find this game, I promise. So, download the TuneIn app. You can listen to the ball game. The metrics only have it. Utah State minus 25.2. But if I go back and look, the numbers have not liked Utah State to cover any of the games. It's like they maybe maybe three or four has not mattered. Utah State nine and one against the spread this season. They've covered four straight. Colorado State is three and seven against the spread. 
They have lost three straight. Colorado State is number 119 in the country in scoring defense. That's, they give up 38.5 points per game. Utah State is number one in the country in scoring offense. They average 51.3 points per game. On the other side, Colorado State, you think, oh, okay, Mike Bobo. They can score a little bit. Not true. Number 107 in the country scoring the ball, 23.1 points per game. However, Utah State's defense, not too shabby. Number 31 is scoring defense, 21.9 points per game. Utah State is going to house the Rams. I don't care where the ball game is. Utah State minus 28 ain't near enough points. My next pick is going to be Duke plus 28 at Clemson. We went over it earlier in the preview show. Clemson's really good. It's disrespectful. Clemson's it gonna is. gonna probably go undefeated. Okay, David Cutcliffe is a legit professional football coach. He knows what he's doing. He's he's pretty good. Is Duke a great team? No, they're a pretty good team. You're not beating them by thirty. Nobody not named Alabama is beating Duke by thirty. I just believe that with all that I have in me. Twenty eight, way too many points. I think Duke covers this line. I think Duke covers this line kind of easy like i think they got a touchdown to spare i can understand that i can roll with it uh i am through four games or no i'm through three games here's my fourth game by the way i'm going complete chalk this week complete chalk that's gonna work out that's I, i'm just saying and i feel really good about these games i don't know why metrics have got app state minus 27.12 the line is minus 28 at home against georgia state saturday 1 30 p.m game on espn 3 it's the only way you can get it. It's on the app. Do what you got to do. App State 8-2 and two against the spread this year. Their quarterback is back, and he is rolling. Georgia State is 2-6-1 and one against the spread this year. And their quarterback, Dan Ellington, uh, he missed last week's 36-22 to 22 loss to La uh, Louisiana Lafayette. And I believe he's going to be out again this week. He is their offense. He is their offense. Without him, they can't score. If you can't score against App State... You are in trouble. App State minus 28. Again, not enough points. Rolling with the bunch from North Carolina. Temple has been a team that I have bet a lot. And Temple's been a team that I've won a lot of money on. And I like Temple a whole lot. I think they deserve a spot in the top 25, even though they've got four losses. And two of those are really, really bad, unforgivable losses. But they were at the beginning of the season. They were at the beginning of the season. Different quarterback. This is a different team. They are really good. With all of that being said, South Florida can still score with anyone. I don't know that Temple should be a 14-point favorite against South Florida. Give me South Florida plus 14 points. um, Okay, so we're going – I'm going to figure this out while we're talking. Uh, Do you have another game that you would want to toss in there? If, sure. if you didn't like nope. that one for whatever reason? No, I'm 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 betting that game. That game's already bet. Oh, okay. Well, it, because it game. if I'm not – You talk me out of it? Well, uh, I, I saw today because that line looked crazy to me. Uh, and Blake Barnett, the quarterback for South Florida, I believe is out. I think that's okay. I'm, I'm going to trust that all these South Florida small teams, all right, he's, South he's, Florida, Central Florida, whatever, they've got like three or four guys that will all play quarterback and they'll all be fine. He is uh, – he's questionable. So we'll see. He they may they may be fine. We'll see. We'll let you we'll let you stick with it. I'm taking 14 points. That's fine. If he's if he if he's out, it's part of it's part of gambling. That's the way it goes. I mean, I almost lost Boston College. I pushed it because the quarterback went down yep. in the first like six plays of the game. Same I mean, it's that's just part of gambling. You're right. You're right. Uh, game number five for me, the Nevada Wolf Pack minus 15 at San Jose State Saturday 4 p.m. on ESPN three. The metrics have got this Nevada minus 14, so it's right around the number. Nevada 5 and 1 against the spread in their last 6. They have covered 4 straight. San Jose State, they are 5 and 5 against the spread. They had won 3 straight or covered 3 straight before not covering against Utah State last week. San Jose State is number 121 in the country in scoring defense. 38.7 points per game. Nevada's number 34 in scoring offense at 33.8 points per game. But Nevada has averaged 36 over the last four. That includes wins over San Diego State, uh, a close loss at Boise. Like, they are putting up some major league points. Nevada is a legit team. 15 points ain't near enough against a crap San Jose State team that is 1-9 this year. Give me the Wolfpack, minus 15. I said earlier in the pregame show, 
UCF has an opportunity on national TV. College game day, all eyes watching to prove they belong. I think Cincinnati is a good team this year. They are not some pushover. They're not some punk that you can bully around. Their defense is really, really good. But I don't know that that's going to be enough. I think UCF is going to make a mark on college football in front of everyone to say, we belong in the playoff. We belong in the same conversation with all the big boys. And we're going to go out here and we're going to kick these guys butt. I could see it because this is UCF saying, all right, you want to say that we hadn't played anybody? That's right. That's cool. How about the number six defense in the country? Country. That's right. Watch us put 40 on them. And, and I don't know that they will. I think they're going to do everything in their power to, to, to absolutely try to do that. And if you haven't watched UCF this year, which a lot of people like know about UCF. But they don't but watch like, them. Their, their wide receivers are spread out oh my from like sideline to sideline. There is so much space there. And, you know, it's, it, it's not a common thing to see, but they are spread from sideline to sideline. And it is, it is a sight to behold with that they're offense. Really, I'm, I'm telling you, they're a really good football team. People that don't want to take them serious are just people that think, this is why I don't like that we actually don't play these games out on the field. If you think that all these big boy teams would just whip their butt, then play them. Yeah, play them and see if they can whip their butt. Because Auburn was a pretty damn good team last year. If I don't mistaken, they beat the hell out of Alabama. They beat the hell out of Georgia. That they, was with Carry On Johnson. The only the only team in the country that did that, and then they got smoked by UCF. Well, they got beat by seven points. I mean, they UCF dominated the game. Yeah. Okay. okay. Come on, man. No, I mean, I, like I, I give them credit for the win. I'm just they didn't smoke Auburn. You can dominate a game and it not be on the scoreboard all day long. No, I mean I agree. LSU with you. dominated Arkansas last week. Complete domination. They won by seven. No, you're right. You're right. Game number six for me: Arizona at Washington State. That's <laughs> Arizona at Washington State. Washington State minus nine and a half. I'm getting less than 10 points here. It's Saturday, 9.30 p.m. on ESPN. The metrics have got Washington State by 14. Look, the Cougs, 9-1 against the spread this season. Arizona, 6-4. and four. They have covered three straight. Arizona is number 90 in the country in passing defense. They give up 250 yards a game and number 74 in scoring defense. Give me a break. Mike Leach is going to run all over Kevin Sumlin, I'm telling you, Gardner Minshew just going to keep inching his way towards New York. The mustache just going to keep riding. It, you like how the mustache riding in the – okay, yeah. Anyway, Washington State, minus nine and a half. Do not let this number get too high on you. Roll with that bad boy. Said I wasn't going to pick any games that you picked at the same time, but I don't care. I can't not – I just can't not bet on him. I can't I can't do it. I just – if if you've been me, betting on him, yeah, he has won you a lot of money. This I, 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 Why no? I know. He's – anyway, I, Washington State. Washington State minus nine and a half. Washington State minus whatever the number is. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Game number seven. Last game for me. Uh, one more for you after this, right? Uh, metrics have Fresno minus 18.3. San Diego State at Fresno State minus 15 for Fresno State. Saturday, 9.30 p.m. CBS Sports Network. Look – Fresno, 8-2 and two this season. They are coming off of loss at Boise. You know they're going to be pissed off. They're going to be fired up. San Diego State is 2-8 and eight against the spread this season. They have not covered in five straight games. They are coming off of a loss at home to UNLV. Ugh. Fresno, 6.26 yards per play on offense. Their defense gives up 4.71 yards per play. San Diego State, 5.42 yards per play on offense. Their defense gives up 4.64. It should be a defensive game. Don't care. Fresno's been in those before. They win this crap 21-3 to almost like religiously. That's what happens. I like Jeff Tedford a lot more than I like Rocky Long in this one. 15 points ain't enough. Roll with the Bulldogs. Fresno State coming off their first loss in the Smurf turf. San Diego State. Well, second second loss. But second first loss. Conference. But yeah, first conference loss. Okay. Coming off a recent loss. San Diego State also coming off a loss. Going into, Look, I think San Diego State's a good team. I think they're going to play defense. I think they're going to keep this thing close. 15 points is just too many. Give me San Diego State. I'm going the other way as Gary. It's been a long time since we've had one of these where we're just going opposite sides. That's right. I, That's, feel, I feel pretty good about it. You know what it is. You like that 15, didn't you? You I like, like, you like that one point. That's right. Well, I don't know. One, 
one point, I like 15. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what one means. Would I have taken him at 14? Maybe. Probably. Like we said before, you go 7-0 and in our picks thing, just leave them in the comments. You go 7-0, we're going to let you on the show. I don't care if there's 100 of you. We're going to call everybody. I'm going to hit you up. We're going to get your phone number. We're going to call you up. We're going to talk about it. And you are going to give us some picks the next week. All right? Sound, sound fair? Sound doable? Sure. You won't even be here next week. Man, what a bunch of crap is that? All right, anyway, uh, you, you'll be on with me, at least, and we'll discuss it. And Gary's old man. You got that right. So my pops will be in for uh, for next week. He coached me in Little League. I believe that. That's only been... Like 23 years ago. That's been longer than that, buddy. Has it really? Man, yeah. We were oh, like eight yeah. or nine years old. I'm about to be 36. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Holy McAlemas. All right. Uh, so go to winningcureseverything.com. Get your picks in over there. We got 10 games up, or we will. Um, we'll have 10 games up. You can win a prize to get down to Tunica, Mississippi. Do that, bad boy. We gave you all the numbers that you need to go be a winner. So pick your favorite games. Go down and get some action in in Tunica, Mississippi. They got six sports books. They are all awesome. Tunicatravel.com has got more information on that. That wraps up the Week 12 picks. 